Module 4, Piping Components, covers the following topics. Component placement, auto route feature, placing relative, modifying components, and sample piping. Our first topic is component placement. Before we place components, we must set the spec that we would like to draw in, as well as set an appropriate line number. We'll leave it at the A spec and line 1 for this sample. So on our drawing, we'll take a look at placing some basic piping components. Let's start with a 90 degree elbow. Our first method is just a free pick in 3D space. When we do this, we're asked to select the schedule and then the nominal pipe size. We'll just go with a four inch. So our component is placed. We can change the direction that we'd like the elbow to go. We can select the O on the keyboard for options. And then we can change the base point, the center. We can rotate it other than the 90 degrees or just enter to accept the component. And we can change the B for base point. So now it changes up or down. But the center, it changes the center point to the different locations. And we can rotate 45 degrees, another 45 degrees. We can continue rotating until we get the desired output and then click enter to finish. And our component is placed. Our second method would be if we were placing a piece of pipe, and again, we'll pick in free space, but we can actually give it a distance, give it a travel distance of say four feet, and then we can pick our schedule and our nominal pipe size. We have our pipe is being placed. There are some options for the base point. If we hit base point, by default it is placed along the center line of the pipe, but we can pick any one of the quadrants. So for a top of pipe elevation or a bottom of pipe elevation, use the connection cones to change. Let's look at placing a flange. We just place a flange, pick a four inch flange, and our flange shows up. Let's look at placing some threaded components. We'll do a threaded 90 degree elbow, and we're just picking in space. Do a one inch elbow, and there is our elbow. And if we shade it, give you an idea of what a threaded elbow looks like. And we also have our socket weld fittings. So we could put in a socket weld T. Again, just free picking in space. Do a three quarter inch. And there is our socket weld T. Very easy to do. Just picking points and picking the appropriate sizes as we place our components. Second method of placing some of our components is to use our connection cones. So let's go back to our butt welded fittings and let's place another 90 degree elbow. And when we select the 90 degree elbow, it allows us to pick a connection cone on the end of our pipe or the end of the flange. By selecting the cone, 3D Smart will automatically place the elbow at the same size, same spec, same line number as the existing component. All we do now is pick the direction we'd like the elbow to travel. Hit enter and the component is placed. To repeat that, we could pick our flange and again we could place it turning down or to the side. Hit enter, and the component is placed. So those are the connection cones. Our last method of placing components would be if we were placing a branch connection like a threadlet. We can pick our threadlet. It asks to select the component. So we'd like to place it on this piece of pipe. I selected near this end of the pipe, so it snaps to this end. If I wanted to reference it from this end, there is a switch option. Just by hitting letter S, switches it so now I'm referencing from this end of the pipe. And I can just do this as a toggle. So I'll toggle back. And let's say we come over 13 inches from the end of that pipe. And we'll put in, say, a 1 inch on a 4 inch. And it puts in our options. All we need to do now is pick the direction. And our threadlet is placed 13 inches from the end of the pipe. Very easy to do. Our second topic is the auto route feature. So when we place components, even though it's fairly easy to do with our connection points, and we'll do a little sample. So I can do a piece of pipe, and then I can place an elbow, and I can connect my elbow, point it down, for instance, and then say another piece of pipe. I'm always having to go back and select this connection cone in order to place my components. To save time, what we can do to do that same little pipe routing is we can actually turn on our auto route feature. So if we pick our auto features tab and select the auto route tool, this is just an on-off switch, so we turn it on. I will then place my piece of pipe. It then says select an auto route direction. And now you notice that the connection cone 
stays highlighted. As I pick my component, it will automatically connect to that connection cone. So all I have to do is give it a direction vector and hit enter. And notice the connection cone moves to the end of the elbow. So now when I place my piece of pipe, it automatically connects, pick my length of pipe, and again, the cone moves with my components. So at any time, I can go in and quickly pick components, and they're automatically placed, and the auto route feature is moved now to the end of the flange. Put in a gasket, go to my valves, place a valve. So all I'm now doing is picking components and setting the directions. Very easy to do. Turn off the auto route feature, go back to my fittings. I could then go in and place an elbow on the end of one of my existing pipes and continue on. If I want to continue off this end of the pipe or maybe this end of the pipe, I can go back in, turn on my auto route feature, place my first component, pick my pipe, and it now sets the auto route feature to this last component. Very easy to do. To turn it off, simply click the tool, makes our design quicker, and it also makes sure that when we have our connection points that they are connecting to the exact points. Our next topic is placing relative components. So in our design, we may find a time where we need to reference the center line of this vertical pipe over to another vertical pipe pointing down. And we know the distance is, say, 3 feet, but we don't know the length of pipe. And I don't want to have to calculate what that length of pipe is going to be in between. So I can place an elbow facing down relative to this one. So let's look at how to do that. Select our Auto Features tab. Select the Place Relative tool. This turns it on. We then can select our component. So I'm going to place a 90 degree elbow. We have our normal connection cones as well as these yellow relative placement cones. Pick the yellow relative placement cone. Select the distance we'd like to reference from. So we'll say three feet. We'll hit enter. We'll pick our elbow. And then we can set our options and our rotations. And then pick enter. And the component is placed. If we use our AutoCAD distance command, we pick the end point to the end point. We see that we have our three foot reference. We can then add a piece of pipe in between. So without having to calculate the length of pipe, it saves a lot of time. Notice the place relative is turned off after each placement so that you can connect automatically to the next object. Very useful. We can reference from any component. So for normal design, we work a combination of using the auto route feature and the place relative. Our next topic is modifying components. So once we've placed our piping components, we have our basic modification tools similar to what are in AutoCAD. We can erase, we can move, we can make copies, and we can do simple 2D rotations. If I want to erase my threaded and socket weld fittings, I can erase them. If I'd like to move this flange and elbow set down, I can do that. I can move over for using AutoCAD's crossing windows, windows, selecting the objects, any of those methods. And we can move our components. This one up here we can erase, so we can do all sorts of operations like that. So we have tools that are specific to 3D Smart, the Modeler, the Stretch Tool, the Break Tool, and the Reconnect Tool. Very useful tools to use, as well as a Revolve and a Rotate on Axis, which are 3D rotational tools. So let's look at doing the Stretch Tool. So I'll move this elbow out of the way. Let's look at stretching this piece of pipe. So I can pick my pipe. Again, we have a switch option to switch which end of the pipe we'd like to stretch but i'd pick this end of the pipe so i'll just stretch this say another 13 inches and the pipe has now been modified so now i can come up and use the next tool called reconnect pick my elbow and you'll notice connection cones pick the connection cone i'd like to reconnect and then select the other connection cone where i'd like the reconnection similar to the move command but better to use the reconnect as it ensures a connection at that point. We can break a piece of pipe with our break tool, similar to the 2D break command in AutoCAD. I can come over, say, 8 inches, and then maybe break it for 10 inches, and we break our pipe. So now I could insert, for instance, a valve. We don't have to erase the pipe and replace the pipe. We can break it and put in our next component. Useful tools when doing our design. Let's look at the Revolve tool. So we can revolve this, ask for a connection cone, and then I can rotate it, say 90 degrees. 
that rotates the whole assembly 90 degrees. The last topic in Module 4 is sample piping. Now let's look at actually doing some piping runs. We'll erase these components and place some components on our existing equipment. I have pre-placed lines in AutoCAD representing the center line of the pipe from our vertical vessel to our horizontal vessel. As well, I've routed a line to represent the center line of the drain piping. So we'll do some threaded piping here and some butt weld flange piping here. So the first thing we'll do is check our spec and our line size. We'll take a look at using the auto route feature. Toggle that on. And then the first thing that we'll connect, we'll start on this end here, we'll start with placing a gasket. You'll notice connection points. We'll select a connection point. We notice that the red connection cone is now on the gasket. We can then place a flange. Now all we're doing is picking components as we go. We can add the bolt. Just pick the flange. Bolt fills up. We'll put in an elbow. So we'll go back to our fittings. 90 degree elbow. And again, we can pick our direction. And we'll pick down to follow my center line. And there's our connection. Let's add a piece of pipe. And we'll go down 11 foot 6. And there's my pipe. Put in another elbow. And again, we can change our direction. But we'll follow the white line. Hit enter. And again, our connection point continues. So we'll just keep going. Place another little piece of pipe. Let's drag along, maybe say two feet. Let's put in a valve set so we can put in a flange gasket, valve gasket, and we can set that right here. Valve set, auto complete, turn that on, and then we'll select our gate valve. So we'll do all of this automatically. We'll get our flange, a gasket, a bolt, a gate valve, a gasket, a flange. We can rotate our valve to the vertical, and the bolt sets are placed. Now we'll try and use the relative option. So I'll turn off my auto route. So what we'll do then is place the elbow relative to the end of this flange at this corner point. Because I don't know what the length of this pipe is. But it's easier just to put in the fitting first and then add the pipe later. So we'll turn on our place relative. Go back to our fittings and place an elbow. We'll pick up our connection point here. Drag to the end of this. Hit enter. Select our 6 inch elbow. Go into our options. Base point. Rotate. And then we hit enter, and our elbow was placed at the corner. I can then go back, place a piece of pipe between my flange and the center of my elbow. So let's just add a length of pipe. Maybe come up two feet. We'll pick our reducing T. We'll reduce down to four inch, and we can rotate and place our T. Again, we're going to put an elbow up here. I don't know the length of pipe, so I'll put my elbow component up here as a relative placement. So we'll select the place relative, select our elbow. Pick the yellow reference, pick up to the top, pick our pipe size, pick O for options, set the base point, and away we go. Again, we can place a piece of pipe in between, and our pipe is placed. We'll come off of the nozzle here, so we'll do auto route, so we'll mix and match of the auto route and place relative. Go to our flanges, pick our gasket, pick our connection point, and then we'll pick our flange, and our bolt set. Let's put in a reducer, so back to fittings, put in a reducer, and we'll go from our 4 inch up to our 6 inch pipe size. Now we want to put an elbow at the corner, so we can turn off our auto route feature, select the place relative, select our 90 degree elbow, select a connection point, which is our reducer, pick the end, hit enter, pick our 6 inch elbow, pick the direction we'd like to go, hit enter to accept. Now we can just add in the pipe. And go from this elbow to the center of this elbow, and there's our piping run. Shade it, and there's what it looks like. We'll look at doing the threaded piping underneath the vessel for the drain coming off the vessel. We'll go back into our wireframe, turn on our auto route. We'll go into our flanges, because we do have a 2-inch nozzle, so we're going to have to reduce down. Let's put in the gasket, select our red connection cone, put in our flange, then we'll add, to get down to our threaded, we'll do a concentric swedge, beveled one end, threaded the other end, and let's go to a one and a half inch pipe size, and there's now our threaded connection. Under threaded fittings, let's throw in a union for a breakaway. Now we want to put an elbow at this end with the length of pipe. So we'll turn off our auto route, and then select our place relative. Pick your 90 degree elbow, one and a half inch to match your size, pick the direction, and our threaded component is placed. We can add some pipe, place relative, place an elbow. This time we'll take the blue connection cone, go from the threaded socket to that corner, pick our one and a half inch, pick the direction. We can put a threaded cap, 
reference it from there to the end of the line. And then just a matter of adding pipe segments in between. And again, we'll pick our pipe. And there is our threaded pipe run. Forgot to change the line number, that's fine. I can set the line number. Under our change tools, we do have a change line number. So we can actually select all of the components that we'd like to change. Change it to this line number. And now they're on that line number. One of the options for the design is we can view by spec. Everything's A spec, so that's why we see the magenta or purple color. But we can view by line and then it will show us the actual line numbers. And if we shade it, so we can see all of our non spec, and then we can see our line numbers. So we have two options, either view by line or view by spec. Lastly, we should save the drawing. This concludes the topics covered in Module 4. Please review Module 4 or select the next module.